As we celebrate the spirits of our loved ones on Dia de los Muertos, one important offering on altars is pan de muerto. So we've come to the heart of the west side to see how it's made. with Edna, the owner of Panifico Bake Shop, and Amelia, who is the head baker here. And we have all the ingredients for Pan de Muerto, which is very important for Dia de los Muertos. We have our wet ingredients here. So what do we have in here? We have the milk, we have eggs, you have uh, water, and then uh, we put the orange essence. Orange? Why orange essence? Why is that so important? The reason why that's so important is because that um, symbolizes the peace and the happiness that you had when with that person when they were alive. We also put in orange zest, orange peel. Amelia, what's next? Just want to give it a little quick stir with Look at you in the details. That's, that's important. It's all in the details. Yes. Okay, see that's how you're supposed to do it. Look at that. All right, Amelia, we're here at the mixer. What goes first? Our base. We're going to add our margarine. Here, I'm adding the sugar. So this is live active yeast. So this is called the window test. This is what okay. I was taught. This is when you know that the dough is ready. We'll have this clear view of the dough while it is not breaking. making pan de muerto? Honestly, when we took over the bakery in 2005, that's when I started learning the whole process. What are the different shapes and what are the most popular for y'all and maybe if people were to make them at home? The round traditional. That With the, the bones yes, on them? The uh -huh. bones. Is pan de muerto part of that, you know, feeding of those spirits when they come back. Yeah, that's what it's supposed to represent, is, is to kind of nourish the soul because the journey was long and, it's, and it's, it was a long journey and so this is what's, what's one of the things that's put on the altar to, to nourish them. In addition to what was, you know, used to be their, their favorite foods and their favorite drink when they were alive. Those are the the bones. Yes, those are the bones that will go on top. So we got a two ounce ball. We're gonna use three fingers. Uh -huh. We're gonna place the dough and we're gonna roll. The, the section in between your fingers is what creates that little indentation. We're gonna place our little crossbones across from each other from okay. end to end. Even though they're baked, ready to eat, they're not done, correct? Yes, so on these, we're gonna dress it with some butter go all over it, right? Yes. Okay. Try to get into the little... Into notes. the little crevices? Yes. So what's... Okay, what are we going to do next? So on this, this is my favorite. We grab some sugar and we just... Oh, okay. Cover it. I missed an area here. I, mean, I want to make sure I get sugar everywhere. All right, there we go. And then look, here is Amelia's with the white sugar. And then we've got Edna's with the pink sugar. Well, there you have it, the many different ways you can make pan de muerto. We've got the traditional round. These are the plain. We've got the sugar, the ones that are covered in sugar, and of course the figurines, which could represent your loved ones. And then we have the mini figurines. Edna, thank you so much for letting us invade your bake shop here. This is wonderful. And Amelia, thank you for teaching us how to do it. So let's take a little taste. I've got the plain one here. Grab a little piece. Let's see. Oh yeah, I can definitely taste that orange. Very important for pan de muerto. Hello everybody, Stefania Jimenez here. Thank you so much for watching KSAT's YouTube channel. Keep up to date with all of San Antonio's top news, weather, and so much more by clicking the like and subscribe buttons below. And once again, thanks for watching KSAT.